That is the rotating zap strap of success. Before I get too much further in the video, I just want to say that Masso is sponsoring this video. Thanks, Masso. Hey guys, well, exciting news, we're back to working on the jeweler's lathe. Just a reminder for those of you who haven't maybe seen any of this project yet, I would recommend going back to the beginning and watching it, but um, the idea behind this lathe is not like a traditional lathe. The idea is that it's going to be lever operated, and that should give you sort of a better feel of what you're doing. And uh, I'm hoping it'll be good for turning things like beads and small pins, uh, jeweler's wax, things like that. I had forgotten how far we'd gotten in this project, I forgot what number we got to, so I actually had to go back and watch my own videos. You know when you watch yourself on video, you're like, man, I don't sound like that, do I? Well, you do. If you've been following along, you'll notice that we've got some handles finished here. Um, that's sort of a big thing. I got the uh, crank arm here anodized, got the handles anodized. Those turned out really well. Um, I've still been sticking with only manually machining parts, so the handles were... I think they're a pretty decent design. They're sort of a, a D shape like you can see here. I went through a couple different design iterations. I started out with kind of like a half popsicle stick shape and then I went on to kind of a coffin shape which was a bit macabre. And then I found, well, <laughs> I kind of woke up and thought of this D shape which uh, I think is pretty cool. I sketched it out in CAD and uh, decided that it was kind of, well it was two dimensional so I actually added some tapers to it which I think really tie it together and it sort of, it matches the design of the lathe, I think. So I think that worked out pretty well. We've also got a tool post here. This is from the same piece of 17.4 as the spindle was made. So I guess keeping it in the family. And uh, there's a little pivot down here. I actually ended up replacing the last pivot I made. This one's bronze. Um, I've got a little groove carved in it here. So the tool post itself just drops on here and then there's a pin that goes in the side here. And it goes through um, tangential to the U-shaped groove in the tool post holder. So that basically locates it in place, and I'm pretty happy with that. I think that works pretty well. I think one thing I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna make this pin a little uh, a little larger and put a head on it so it's removable, and then maybe I can put different tooling on it as needed. It'll be sort of like a quick change thing. I'm not super happy with how rigid it is. Uh, it's a little wobbly. I should have gone for a bit of a closer fit, but as you'll see in the video, I kind of hacked out this U-shape because I didn't have a form tool, and I evidently couldn't be bothered to make one, so it worked out fairly well. Uh, stainless steel on bronze is a pretty good bearing surface, so it feels pretty good. So you'll see that I've actually got two threaded holes on the front of the tool post here. That's for when the lathe tool goes in, I can actually put a retainer on here, and then I can hopefully adjust how far in and out the tool is on the fly and not worry about it flying out the side and hitting me in the face. Uh, the grub screws on top are just like you would imagine to hold the tool down. And I've got a threaded hole back here. That is going to be for a handle. If I can find an M6 fastener. So when the handle's threaded in the back, I'll be able to sort of turn it dynamically like this and I'll be able to cut radii and I can adjust how far out the tool is so I can change the radius. So I think that'll be pretty neat. And then of course I can tighten the handle in and that'll lock it in position. And then I can go about my normal XZ cutting. Um, one mistake I've made well, not really a mistake, I should have seen it coming. I only had this piece of material so I couldn't make this tool post any bulkier, but the fact that I'm locating off this threaded section here, I'm basically um, moving it around uh, against the threads, it feels kind of cheap, it feels kind of sloppy. So one thing I might do is add a spring to the mechanism. If you've got a spring pushing out, you're sort of taking up the backlash, and it feels, I don't know, it feels better. Ideally what I would have done is used a bigger piece of material and actually had kind of a, a guided section out here and that would have made it sort of feel a little more robust and a little heftier. The next big update is the control panel. I'm not going to turn it on. The wiring is the wiring is done. It's coming together. It's just now it's a matter of zip tying what to wear and not my favorite thing but it certainly seems to work. One thing I've actually noticed about this speed control kit is that this little display thing is actually designed as a through hole mount. So it's actually got pin connectors on the other side and those would go through a circuit board and you'd solder it right in place. That being said, there's no rim around it so I think I might have to make a bezel to hold this in place. Everything else is pretty straightforward. The switch pushes in from the front. This is just a normal potentiometer with a, an off on function. Um, 
you probably saw in the intro I had it turned on. This just shows the duty cycle. So this is a, I believe it was a 4,000 RPM motor. So it's going to be um, 4,000 divided by 0. Point whatever this is. It's PWM and it's a brush DC motor. So it should have decent low end torque. So that's a good thing. And of course it's a low cost motor. So I'm pretty happy about that system overall. I finally replaced this stupid little link with an actual stainless steel one. That's just a little change, but uh, looks so much better. One thing I'm thinking very seriously about doing is doing a CNC version of this exact machine. So having gone through this machine multiple times, machining parts, doing drawings to put on Patreon, I've sort of not fallen in love with, but I've started to appreciate more and more the basic chassis of the machine. Um, I don't like the dovetails so much for a CNC application, so I take those out and put linear guides in. But you can imagine where this um, shaft goes through the back, you could have a lead screw, and then there would be some space up here for a motor, and you could have a really nice compact little CNC lathe. So I'm thinking of doing a retrofit for that. One thing that's hopefully going to make that a little bit easier, and probably a lot faster, is that I've been learning to use the Haas at work. It's a VF2. So far I've been enjoying it quite a bit, I haven't crashed it thank god, but it's just stunning how much material it can move compared to the Tormac. You can do much larger step overs, much larger depths of cut, and uh, yeah, so hopefully once I've designed the parts for this I can just hammer them out and maybe I'll do like a, like a branch video for a CNC version of this. Still no brilliant ideas on the work holding for this yet. This is a 20 millimeter shaft on the outside. The original plan was to do kind of an external clamping system because I wasn't thinking it would take very much torque. I'm still considering that. Uh, it's certainly gonna be cut off a lot shorter so there's a little more Z travel. I'm also considering threading it for 3 quarter 16 threads so I can screw on tag accessories. Uh, I think that would be cool. That would offer quite a bit of versatility. There's a slight possibility I'm going to end up redoing this spindle shaft. Um, that's the spindle shaft from the first video. And that'll just be to knock a hole through it. And, uh, you know, maybe I can stick some smaller material through it. That wasn't really the idea with this lathe overall. The idea for this lathe was to sort of uh, cut the piece of material you want to work with, put it in the machine, work with it, take it off the machine, as opposed to kind of like feeding bar stock in and cutting a pin and cutting it off and feeding it in. And you know what I mean? That's about it for the Jewelers Lathe updates for now. I'm going to work on the drawings and get those up to Patreon. For those of you who are new to the channel, I have a Patreon and I'll put drawings up for projects for the $3 range and then uh, the $1 range is the CAD and that $3 or $1 gives you access to everything I've ever done CAD or drawing wise. So, you know, I it, no hard feelings if you just want to subscribe for the one month and then unsubscribe. It's, you know, that's totally fine by me. I'm grateful for any contribution I received, to be honest. All right, guys, that's it for the Jewelers Lathe update. Um, hopefully, I'll be back fairly soon with a CNC retrofit version of this. In terms of videos I have left to do, work holding and maybe kind of finishing up the chassis, like, you know, uh, making sure the electronics are held in place properly, and then a demo cut. So that's moving along pretty quickly, actually. Thanks a lot for tuning in. Cheers.